Hi everyone, today we're going to be looking at this 11 watt solar charger from Quarter Power. Now the interesting thing about this is I also have this 7 watt model and they sent me this to review last year and I never really had time to review it so I said I'm sorry I don't have time, let me pay you for it. So I actually ended up paying them for this one but then they sent me this one to review this year. Now they're pretty much identical in size, if you look here, same width, same height and if you open them up they're both two panels. So I really have no idea how they managed to get from 7 watts to 11 watts in exactly the same space. The only difference I can see is the solar panel type. So these ones must be much more efficient. Maybe they've also done some smart logic in the USB charge side of things. But yeah, we've jumped from 7 watts to 11 watts in the exact same space. Now for anyone that's curious, this is a portable solar panel made by CDR King. And this is 10.5 watts. So this is 11 watts and this is 10.5 watts. Now you can see that the one from CDR King is actually three panels, 10.5 watts, whereas this one from Portable is just two panels. So I really am curious to see if this really can output up to 11 watts, or at least something close to that. Now if you haven't seen one of these portable solar panels before, you might not know exactly how it works. There's no battery built into this. It works on the principle of use it or lose it. So if you open up this pouch here, Inside you'll find two USB ports, so you can plug in your smartphone, your tablet, your power bank, anything that you want to charge, and that's it. It basically goes straight from the solar panel through a little bit of logic to smooth out the voltage, etc., and then into these USB charging ports. Now this pouch on the back not only acts as somewhere to put your device while it's charging or just to hold these, but it also works as a stand. So when you angle it like this, you can have it angled towards the sun because it is very important how you angle these to maximize the amount of power you get out of it. If you just lay it flat on the ground, a lot of the time you won't get as much power as if you angle it directly to the sun. So in everyday use, you would angle this towards the sun, plug in your USB charge cable for your cell phone or your tablet, and then plug your phone into the solar charger. And you can see there that it says 60% charge. I don't know how well you'll be able to see this on camera because it's, you know, the sun is hitting the screen. And I'll try and zoom in on the screen. So you can see there that it has begun charging. Now, a couple of tips. You don't want to leave your cell phone out in the hot sun because it's not gonna do the battery any good. So that's why you should try and make use of this pouch here. Put your cell phone in there to keep it away from the sun. Or what I normally do is plug in, say, a one meter or a three meter USB extension cable in here. And then I run it inside, say, the hotel room or inside a cabana or something like that. For instance, if you're using this at the beach, or even if you had this, say, on a balcony at home, you could run a USB extension cable and then you can just plug in and unplug devices at home without having to go outside and play with this every time. And this is water resistant. Apparently it's okay against rain. You can't submerge it, say, in a bucket of water, but it can get wet from rain and it won't get damaged. But let's say you want to harvest power during the day but then use it at night. Well the easy way to do that is just to charge a power bank. This is a regular power bank, charges by micro USB. I could leave this charging while the sun is up and then when night time comes I can unplug it and I've got this fully charged. And then when night time comes I can use something like this USB bowl plugged into the power bank and I have light. So you do have options of storing the power during the day just using a regular USB power bank. So that's the basics of how this thing works. Now let's actually do some testing to see how much power we can get out of this. Now, just a word of warning, if I look up, you can see that it's a very cloudy day. There's not much sun in sight. So I'm going to try and catch the sun whenever it comes out. So this may take a while, but of course, for those watching on camera, I'll just cut the shot and you'll be able to see as soon as the sun comes out. Now to measure the amount of power I'm getting out of this, I'm going to use this USB watt meter and I'm going to use this dummy load. This is much more reliable than trying to charge a cell phone which might charge at an unreliable rate. This dummy load can be set to charge at 1 amp or 2 amp, so it's a very easy way to put this portable solar panel under test. So this might be a little bit difficult to see on camera, but you can see it's currently outputting at 5.2 volts and of course at 0 watts because I haven't yet connected a load. Now although it is at 5.2 volts, which is good for USB, it's worth mentioning that when it's a really overcast day like this for example, you might get the 5 volts but as soon as you put a load on it, it's going to drop down because there's just not enough sun on the panel to maintain it. So just seeing 5 volts is not enough. You have to see what happens under load. So right now it's so cloudy and you can see there's no sun at all coming through. And if I connect the load, watch what happens to the voltage. Now this is a little bit hard to show on camera because the screen is hard to see out in the sun. You can see that now that I've got my load attached, 
we are pulling out power, I say 1.3 watts, but the voltage has dropped down to 2.7 volts. Now that doesn't mean there's something wrong with this panel, it's literally just because there's no sun coming through. So all I have to do is wait until the sun comes out. So I've now transferred locations to somewhere much nicer and it's a really sunny day. So let's do our test. So I have the 11 watt solar panel again. Let's open it up and let's connect our load. Now we're going to start with our test load on just one amp and see if it can manage that. I'm sure it should be able to. Hopefully I won't fill my USB ports up with sand. Okay, so I don't know if you can see that on camera. Let me zoom in on the watt meter. You might be able to read it, but we're getting basically one amp. Let's try set it to the two amp setting. And wow, there you go. We're not getting two amp, but we're getting 1.5 amp. Let's try and angle this towards the sun. So the most I'm getting so far is around 7.5 watts. See if we can angle this better. I think the problem is that we're getting a bit of voltage drop, 4.56 volts and 1.65 amps. We're getting seven and a half watts. Let's see if we can do better than that. Okay, now what I'm thinking is maybe there's a maximum that you can pull per port since there are two ports here. So I'm gonna connect another load here and then see how much we can pull out of the panel. So now I've connected my iPhone and we have the USB dummy load here and let's see what the total we get. Okay, so we've actually got six watts on one of them, one watt on the other. And today is an absolutely perfectly clear sunny day. So I am getting the maximum that you could get out of this. So it seems that it doesn't matter if you use both ports or one port, the maximum you can get is around seven and a half watts. So I'm not sure what to say. It's meant to be an 11 watt panel, but I can't get more than seven and a half watts off this. Now seven and a half watts is still quite impressive for something this small and how portable this is. But seven and a half is a long way off 11 watts. So I hope you enjoyed my review the Porter Power 11 watt solar charger. It does need good sunlight to work, but once you've got that sunlight, it works very well and it's extremely easy to use. Just plug your cell phone or your tablet in just like you would in say an AC wall socket and it starts charging. So if you enjoyed this video, please give a thumbs up and subscribe. Thanks for watching.